Taysen has become one of the most remarkable players within the EU pro scene. I mean, a 16-year-old Slovenian prodigy who has amassed an incredible 250,000 in earnings and is a two times FNCS winner. Bunch of crunch army, so excited. Today, we're taking a look at Taysen's speed, insane peace control, pinpoint accuracy to discover everything he does right and everything he does wrong. But before we get into this analysis, guys, all right, I gotta tell you about our Discord server. We're about to start our very own series of scrims. So if you wanna scrim against other players who are serious about the game you guys got to check it out in the link in the description you guys ready for this i know i am let's get this going So being able to control every single wall and floor around your enemies and trap them is what separates the good players from the best. And Taysen's peace control, whoo, yo, it's just on another level. Taysen's ability to box players even when in the top tier lobbies is incredible. Like, I mean, he's literally insane. His edits, his movement, positioning, his aim all contribute to the peace control legend that he is. It just goes to show guys like how important practicing those peace control drills really is. So the pure speed of Taysen when he these boxing players is definitely a match, and the speed and accuracy that comes with it makes for a deadly combo. So we recently released a video about, you know, peace control drills that can help you guys master everything that you need to know about the topic. And if you guys want to become a legend in the peace control scene like Taysom, then you definitely need to check that video out. Let me ask you this. Do you want to utilize peace control like Taysom? Like if you do, you have to head on over to ProGuides.com, where we've got some of the best incredible courses lined up to really help you become the best Fortnite player that you can be. You know, there is no reason that you should be using non-optimal keybinds in 2021. Like seriously, having good keybinds for your building and editing in Fortnite can really save you a ton of hassle in the long run. And Taysen definitely knew this when he just chose his keybinds. Taysen has every single one of his builds on a different finger and his edit key on F. This means the only time he ever has to use the same finger for two different things when building is with his right index for editing and floor builds. So one tip for key binds is to either have your building edit key on your pinky finger or thumb. Now, this may take a while to really get used to, but you know what? It's just so useful because it really gives you the freedom to really straight both left and right when editing. Like not having to move your fingers off the WASD movement keys is great. I know, you know, it's not easy to really get used to new key binds and you might feel like an absolute bot if you make drastic changes all in one go. I get it, I've been there many times, but you know, if you manage really push through really just be resilient man you got to kind of get through that phase where you know you're still getting used to it it's frustrating I, I get it but it's only going to help you out in the long run and once you really get used to those new binds man you're going to feel like an entirely new player you're going to be so much more confident to really feel free to move and and just be so much better when build fighting okay so if you want to learn more about which key binds that you should use all right we've recently posted a video all about it right here okay guys so use this guide to become the peace control legend like Taysen and really just flawlessly box your enemies in every game. All right, so Taysen has been, you know, in the competitive scene for a while. And not just in Fortnite. I mean, even before that, he played a variety of games like CSGO, Rocket League. However, okay, all the games that he played had one thing in common. They were all competitive games. Playing these games meant Taysen was always hungry for competition. His incredible aim, man, like game knowledge and game sense was always being practiced before he even played Fortnite. So when he started playing Fortnite competitively, it really pushed him ahead of the curve. And so all that time playing heavily competitive games eventually paid off because now he's a pro player playing at the highest tiers for his team guild. Unfortunately, you can't just practice game sense like any other mechanical skill. For example, learning how to edit fast or retake high ground. I mean, you have to gradually learn it over time from playing in real tournaments time and time again, just like Taysen. So, you know, this one isn't just about Taysen, but it's also about his chemistry with his current teammates, Mr. Savage and I Drop, especially during Endgame. All right, so their comms, man, like, you know, it really just keeps them consistently aware of each other's current positions and establishes such a good chemistry, which really keeps them ahead of the competition. You know, every one of their callouts is detailed, short, and concise. This skill requires extensive focus and brain power since the game is always so action packed. So, you know, you don't really want to be bursting out unnecessary information to your teammates, which doesn't even help them. I mean, it can even sometimes prevent your teammates from just hearing vital noises in games like enemy footsteps. You know, so even sometimes pro players like Mongrel will tell their teammates to be quiet for a few seconds so he can just really hear the enemy allowing for an easy kill. He's kissed my go, 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 go. Yeah, wait, they killed them. Wait, wait, he killed them. They killed one. They killed one. Savage killed one. I'm pretty sure. I need some, I need some. 
So guys, if you want to learn good comms like Taysen and Mr. Savage, you need to put in the time. And there's no other way around it, really. You can't not practice with your teammates in games like scrims and arena and tournaments and really, you know, expect good chemistry with them. And I think everybody who, who we interact with, like any any time we're in any team mode, like we have to have some type of connection with them. And that's really going to translate well. You know, their ability to apply a pressure in W key as a trio is just so fast and efficient. Like, I'm sure you all remember when Taysun, Mr. Savage and, you know, Eyedrop managed to produce an insane 56 kill game, right? Well, take a look at this fight taken from that game. I mean, it's a clear example of how quickly the trio was able to seemingly and effortlessly just wipe out another team. You can see the moment takes on spots an enemy car rotating. I mean, he marks the location and the trio instantly just starts closing in on them. Taking advantage of movement features like the crystals and sand tunneling so they can just quickly clear the distance between them. The team is in the car, trying to get away, but Taysun and his trio catches up extremely fast. And when they get there, whew, the fight is over within seconds. That's not fair. Like one thing to recognize is that the trio focuses on pinching the enemies from different angles, forcing them to build and effectively just split up into separate fights. Making the enemy team split up into separate boxes makes them weaker since they can't get back up or just gang up on you and pinching them from different angles i mean it makes it 10 times harder for them to protect from bullets which causes the enemy trio to really get eliminated really fast all right but your crunch saw me remember that this video is just subjective criticism like this guy is literally a top tier pro player and it's not easy to really find consistent mistakes made by pro players so you know a lot of these mistakes can just be boiled down to the style of how some players like Taysom play i mean you know it's a lot easier to make a mistake and die when your play style includes aggressive w king rather just sitting in a one by one and just waiting for placements Tayson is now a very large professional fortnite streamer and sometimes stream sniping can really get out of hand who agrees you know like when he's streaming arena solos you know he will land salty towers tilted every single game without fail so that he can just try to get as many kills as possible and w key his opponent he obviously does this so that he can entertain his viewers and really keep them engaged However, I will say this, Tilted is dead center of the map and is arguably the most popular hotspot in the game right now. And due to stream snipers and the large interest for the hotspot, Tilted will be over contested every single game without fail. Some may even argue that this is good for the streamer because he can get as many kills as possible and W key. But because of the stream sniping, Taysen will get targeted and die over and over, which is just unfair. He even said publicly, how do pros manage to stream arena for more than one hour? I swear it's impossible. This honestly just makes the game feel unplayable at times and also makes the practice he's getting very unrealistic. And a lot of the time, I mean, he can't even make it to the end game because of the amount of unfair stream snipers that are put in his game. Issues like this, you know, are just near impossible to really avoid. However, I mean, he can try a few techniques like hiding your screen when landing <laughs> and putting on hidden matchmaking delay in the Fortnite settings to really minimize the amount of stream snipers that, that really come across in his games. Maybe not even landing at highly contested areas like Tilted will also minimize the chances. Plus, I mean, it's a lot more common to get third party when you do land at Tilted because so many players rotate through that part of the map. So in this clip, taken from Razor Cup Opens, you can really see that Taysen is in his endgame with 38 players left in the game, and his team are uncontested at a gas station. You can see that his whole body is pretty much left exposed when shooting at players coming from zone, and he eventually gets sniped through a window from a team late to zone. So snipes like these, man, can be avoided pretty easily if you just remember to really just make sure that you need to cover your back. No matter what, his teammates try to revive him, but they end up getting pushed too quickly and the game takes a quick turn. Unfortunately, they ended up losing the game. And although it was quite unlucky to be, you know, headshot sniped out of nowhere, it could have easily been avoided. So here, and I mean like right here, I mean, we can see that Taysen, Mr. Savage and Eyedrop managed to take out a team pretty well in the middle of Salty. But this here is a clear example that sometimes even top tier pro players make unfortunate simple mistakes. They forgot to cover their sides when going for a revive. And this resulted in them getting silently crept up on by a solo player and taken out as they were reviving Mr. Savage. Taysen could actually see the player on the corner of his screen a few seconds before he got a shot off on him now obviously guys this whole thing could have been avoided if they just remembered to build you know a one by one surrounding them to just to make sure that no one could get a snipe or like we just saw a sly shotgun pump shot directly at them but they just must have thought that there was nobody around and that they were safe 
I mean, it would make sense that Tace and Anna's trio was just tunnel vision on that one fight, and maybe they were celebrating it when they won, and since the enemy player was just crouching instead of running, and that's why they couldn't hear him, creeping up on them, which would make sense. But even so, pro players at that level should not be forgetting to build one-by-ones when going for a revive on a teammate. So in this video, taken from the third FNCS qualifier, Tayson manages to clutch a 1v1 against an opponent using the charged shotgun, and he ends up on really low health. Now, because he's still getting rushed by the enemy trio, he isn't able to get the finish on his opponent, which leaves him on only 40 health. And the person he knocks somehow gets revived by his teammates by throwing him to low ground. So he disengages and he heals up using shields. So the second that he finishes healing, he instantly goes and he helps his trio fight the same person again. And they manage to finally eliminate the trio, leaving Taysen on 24 HP. Literally the second they eliminate this team, another one just comes out of nowhere, aggressively pushes Taysen's team while they're still weak. And out of reflex, Taysen begins tarping the safety. His mistake here is that he instantly begins harping away from his enemies to heal up without realizing he was going straight to the edge of the circle, which a few seconds later began shrinking, which forced Taysen to head back to the enemies without even getting enough time to heal up, leading to his death. You know, so what Taysen should maybe have tried doing instead of tarping towards the zone was possibly just try and stick with his teammates, eye dropping Savage, because then he wouldn't end up being pressured into fighting an enemy on 24 health. However, Savage did in fact get knocked as Taysen started tarping, so maybe bringing the attention to him instead of Eye Drop and Savage, who was reviving at the time, was actually a good idea. Since Eye Drop ended up surviving the game for quite a lot longer, stashing away some more placement points. You know, there's obviously going to be a million different ways to play that. However, one of the most important factors to surviving in tournaments like that is your positioning and late game rotations, especially when the zone starts closing in on you. And so if you wanna learn more about rotations, we suggest watching this video here. All right, it's gonna teach you guys like all you need to know about how to rotate like a pro and really become a master at moving into zone during your games. Anyways, guys, bunch of crunch army. That's it for everything Taysen does right and everything he does wrong. And you know what? We all do things right and we all do things wrong. And the things that we're doing wrong, listen, we have to take our time to really work on those weaknesses, all right? Don't give up and don't be too hard on yourself, okay? If you guys liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and connect with me on my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. I'm so proud of you guys. Keep going. I'll see you soon.